So I'm going to do something a little different with the case studies this week. I'm going to go through sequentially what you do in the field with the patient that presents with a certain uh, complaint, and we're going to kind of go through it together. So we'll do a series of videos about how a patient presents in the field, is picked up by EMS, carried to the ER, and the plan of treatment throughout the uh, course of the patient's care. So the first patient I have is a 54-year-old female who was in her normal state of health, and she was with her family, suddenly complained of an excruciating headache, and she collapsed. EMS arrives in the field, and the patient has the following exam. She moans to painful stimulus. She is not oriented, does not speak. Um, her eye exam is that she opens her eyes with deep painful stimulus. And her motor exam, or when you try to stimulate her, is she does not move the left side, but she will reach up with her right side and try to grab you. So the first question I have is, what is the patient's GCS? What is the diagnosis that you suspect? And what are the steps in evaluating the patient that you will do initially? The next question is, what can EMS do in transit to the ER that may help this patient? And then lastly, when the patient arrives to the ER, what does the ER personnel do to stabilize this patient? And then what is the next series of tests that are done? I will go through all of these answers in another video tomorrow and go through the test results and then we'll go through what the next steps are. Make sure you follow me to get the answers tomorrow. Okay, here are the answers to the case study. So the first uh, step was this a 54 year old female with headache and collapse. Um, I asked question number one was what is her GCS? Remember this was her exam. She moans to pain, opens her eyes uh, to painful stimulus, localizes with the right side and has no movement on her left side. So GCS is a calculation of three being the lowest score and 15 being the highest score. Three means comatose and 15 means normal. These here are the assessments of how the patient does with their eyes. So four being opening eyes is spontaneously, uh, three is to verbal command, two is to pain. So this patient opens her eyes to pain so she gets a two on the eye score. Verbal response is at a five. This patient we state was moaning incomprehensible sounds so that would be a two and then motor response you'll get it out of six uh, six being normal following commands five being localizing to pain meaning that if you pinch them they'll try to pull up and grab you uh, so she gets a five so two plus two plus five equals she has a gcs of nine remember we said the patient had a sudden headache collapse and a GCS of nine now. So what is our differential diagnosis? Differential diagnosis is highest on the list is going to be some type of stroke, uh, ischemic versus uh, hemorrhagic with hemorrhagic being high on the differential because of her complaints of a sudden headache. And um, that is more common with some type of bleed with a sudden increase in intracranial pressure. So the responsibilities and the stepwise approach of EMS assessment of the patient is always the ABCs in any patient. Uh, first, assessing for airway to make sure that the airway is open and secure. B is breathing and C is circulation, of course, and making sure that they have adequate perfusion and pulse. Um, in a patient such as this, the airway is extremely important. So if a uh, primary airway needs to be secured in the field, that should be done. Especially in a patient with a GCS of less than eight, they're probably going to be intubated in the emergency department e anyway. The other question I had asked was, what could EMS do in transport to help with this patient? In transit is gonna be very important to keep the patient's oxygenation. We suspect that the patient may have increased intracranial pressure due to their presentation. So keeping their oxygenation up, their head of bed elevated, a little bit hyperventilated over hypoventilation. That means having them breathe faster. And then once they get to the ER, I'll go through all the tests and other things that need to be done tomorrow. So like and follow me and let me know if you like this format. All right, this is the last of this case series and the 54-year-old female who had 
uh, sudden collapse after complaining of a severe headache with her family. We discussed how EMS was called. Um, she was brought in by EMS to the emergency department. We went through her GCS, which was a GCS of nine, and uh, strategies that EMS can do in the field in order to bring the patient to a stroke center to get her the appropriate care. So upon arrival to the ER, her uh, patient's GCS declined. Uh, she became a GCS of five. She started to decompensate, uh, became completely unresponsive, and her left pupil started to blow. Uh, the patient was noted to have bradycardia and elevated blood pressures. These are all signs of cerebral edema or swelling of the brain, and this patient likely has a large stroke or head bleed of some sort. Um, the bradycardia is a sign of brain herniation. The pupil dilating on one side is a sign of brain herniation, and this patient is in extreme trouble. So a stroke alert should be called in the emergency department. The patient should have their airway immediately secured in the emergency department given the concerns on examination and neurosurgery should be made aware immediately. Um, the patient should be taken for a STAT, CT of her brain and CTA. Uh, a CTA looks at the blood vessels to tell if there's some type of stroke or ruptured blood vessel or vascular malformation. So here is her imaging. So what we see on this CT scan is a large blood clot uh, that's centered in her right frontal lobe uh, with some subdural blood that kind of spans the whole right side of her brain. There is a shift of the brain from one side to the other and uh, an impending herniation of the brain. There's just global swelling here. This is a picture of what a normal CT should look like. So basically symmetry, you should be able to draw a line right down the middle and see one side of the brain is identical. And on this patient's scan, you can see clearly no um, fluid in the brain, which is a sign of swelling, and then this large blood clot. Given the patient's rapidly declining exam, she had a mere probably less than an hour of life left or she was going to die. Uh, she was taken emergently to the operating room where we performed a craniotomy. We removed this blood clot and the patient ended up uh, walking out of the hospital uh, just minutes from dying. So uh, just miraculous work by our team, uh, miraculous work on the patient's behalf for recovery. So hope you enjoy the case study.